Now I'm going to prepare some of my previously declared variables. I like to do this because if you're dealing with a very complex program and that have a lot of entry points or classes that get called, you always want to have your processing values appropriately set before you execute any processing logic. So here's an example of how to set the Boolean. And here I initialize my counter. Now right here I essentially do a priming read. What this does is go out and perform a read on the next row of data and what it returns is that Boolean value that indicates to us if there's something there to read. Now let's get into the perform loop. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the perform with a test before, meaning do the test before you ever step into the perform loop here. So as long as we get a one bit back from the invoke data reader, we know that we're going to have data and when we get a zero back, we can bail out of the loop. Now this next part gets a little bit tricky. At this point, we know that we have data, but where is it? Well, the data is located in the data reader object. So we're going to invoke the data reader object and execute the getString method. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to delete this getString method part right here so that we can actually see how this works. So I've got invoke object data reader. I'll press the space bar. And of course, I'll go ahead and get my get string. So I'll just start typing get string. And as you can see, I see my get string value in my IntelliSense. I'll just double click that. And then I'll press the space bar one more time. What it's expecting is a return value that sort of looks like a subscript reference for a column. Note that in the SQL statement, we said select first name, last name, home phone, from employees. Now the subscript reference that I'm talking about here is related to the order of the column names that are returned from the query. Remember in the .NET world everything is zero based so the first column in the result table or collection that we get back is the first name that is referenced as zero. Last name is one and home phone is two. Now I'm going to add one to my record counter and I'm going to display the record. Now I'm going to do another read here returning my boolean in order to set up the next test. Once we're done with the perform loop and we're done with the data reader we want to close the connection so we do that with the invoke object connection and the close method. I'm going to display a message on the screen and now finally we'll stop the execution and prompt the user to press a key to exit out of the program. So let's run this. I'll do a build and just so we can see it. Okay, we have one build succeeded. We're up to date, zero failed, and of course zero skipped. Now I'll come up here to the debug menu and go ahead and step over. As you can see here, we stopped on the procedure division. Remember that this is really the very first executable line in your COBOL program. Now I'll step through. Okay, I have done the first invoke and it passed. What I'd like to do is hover over the object connection just for a moment. Let's take a look at state. Notice that the state of the connection at this particular point is closed. Now I'll step through open and let's take another look at object connection. Now notice the state of the connection is now open. I'll step past the SQL statement and now I'll invoke the SQL command. Now I'm going to step past my data initialization here. I've stepped past object data reader returning my boolean so let's take a look at my boolean and of course it is set to tr uh, true there are records there so now we're going to go ahead and perform the test until my boolean is not true what I'm going to do is set up a watch on my boolean so I'll hover over it I'll right mouse click on it and I'll add watch let me pin this down here so that we can see what's going on. Now I'm going to add a couple of more watches here. So first name, add a watch, 
So your last name, add a watch, home phone, add a watch. As I step through the code, notice that these values start changing. Now I could step through the loop again and again, but that would become pretty tedious very quick. So I'll position my cursor on the invoke object connection with the close method here, and I'll select run to cursor. I'll right mouse click and select run to cursor. And all of the records have been processed. As you can see in the watch window here, in red, there is a zero bit in the my Boolean field. I'll go ahead and step through the next few uh, statements here. And now we can see on the console window all of the records that were processed and my program is actually sitting here waiting for me to press enter in order to exit. I'll do that now. And we're finished. So to recap, ADO.NET is used by programmers to access data and data services. It's a part of the base class library that's included with the Microsoft.NET framework specifically accessed from system.data namespace. It's commonly used by programmers to access and modify data stored in a relational database system, though it can be used to access data in a non-relational source. As we've seen, it's also a very effective alternative to accessing data via ODBC. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this desktop video. Thanks for watching.